Hello, and thank you for tuning in for this Central Eurasian Studies Summer Institute information session. My name is Sarah Linkert, and I am the SESI Program Coordinator, and I'm looking forward to telling you about our 2023 summer program today. We are going to start our presentation by reading the UW-Madison Land Acknowledgement Statement. The University of Wisconsin-Madison occupies ancestral Ho-Chunk land, a place their nation has called Dejop since time immemorial. In an 1832 treaty, the Ho-Chunk were forced to cede this territory. Decades of ethnic cleansing followed when both the federal and state government repeatedly but unsuccessfully sought to forcibly remove the Ho-Chunk from Wisconsin. This history of colonization informs our shared future of collaboration and innovation. Today, UW-Madison respects the inherent sovereignty of the Ho-Chunk Nation, along with the 11 other First Nations of Wisconsin. Okay, just briefly to go over what will be covered in this information session, we will start by introducing ourselves, then we will tell you about what SESI is as a program, what to expect as a student. We will talk about how to apply to SESI and give you some tips for creating a competitive application. And then we will talk about the cost of attending SESI and what financial aid and funding opportunities are available to students. As I mentioned, my name is Sarah Linkert, and I am the SESI Program Coordinator. And I'm Megan. I'm the SESI Graduate Student Project Assistant. So what is SESI? SESI is an eight-week program. It runs from June 19th through August 11th, 2023. Uh, we typically offer language courses in Kazakh, Tajik, Uyghur, and Uzbek. Uh, language course offerings depend on applications received, so we do offer um, from beginner to advanced language courses depending on applications we receive by February 1st, the priority application deadline. We may also offer courses in Kyrgyz and Azerbaijani with sufficient student interest. Upon completing the program, students receive the equivalent of one year of university level language instruction from over eight weeks of study, eight UW Madison credits and a transcript, and certified oral proficiency interview results. So, what is a day in the life of a SESI student like? From Monday through Friday, from 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m., you will be in classes. There is a lunch break, a 30-minute lunch break included within those hours. Um, about three to five hours a day after classes, students should reserve for homework or self-study time. This is, as mentioned, an intensive program, so you will have a lot of homework, and um, you will need to do a lot of individual independent study because you will be covering a week of content each day in class. And then on Thursdays from 4 to 5.15 p.m., there is the SESI weekly lecture series, which Megan will tell you more about momentarily. And in addition to those regularly scheduled events, uh, SESI offers many optional co-curricular events and opportunities. All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the uh, co curricular programming that SESI offers. So like Sarah said, we have the weekly SESI lecture series. We invite um, speakers from in the field from across the country and sometimes internationally to come to Madison to present on a variety of research topics. We really try to um, tailor the topics of each lecture to um, what students are interested in that year. Um, we also do a number of cultural activities, um, Dastarhan, which is usually one of the first um, sort of events that we hold um, during the course of the summer program. It's sort of like a potluck. Everyone brings a dish to pass or contributes in some way. And we, you know, um, play games, we'll watch, listen to music, things like that. Um, and it's a really fun way to sort of get to know everyone in the program um, right away at the beginning. We've also done uh, cooking demonstrations where our instructors 
will lead us through um, cooking a particular dish from whatever culture they are, um, you know, teaching the language of. We've also done uh, museum tours. Um, the UW has a couple of really cool museums right downtown, one of which is free for students. So that'll be free for you if you attend. Um, they've got some uh, really interesting collections of um, Central Asian um, and uh, sort of Middle Eastern art, which is really cool. Um, and then the instructors also coordinate activities throughout the semester. This can be events with other classes at different levels. Um, it can be language tables like the one pictured here. Um, and it can even be field trips. I think in the past there have been um, field trips organized to Chicago and other nearby sort of locations. Um, we also do film screenings of sort of popular films from the region, lunch and learns with um, sort of respected um, sort of uh, individuals from the field, um, other community building activities like a bonfire, um, and then Whistley, our sort of overhead organizer, um, also runs a couple of events. This includes the student conference where um, students can present on their research that they're working on in sort of a smaller, more informal setting. Um, and there's also the less commonly taught languages career fair, um, where Wisley sort of invites um, individuals who are using their uh, less commonly taught language uh, in their career, how it's affected their career path. Um, so that's also a really cool opportunity that's offered here at UW and at SESI. Um, so obviously there's um, a big choice to be made when you're considering where you want to, to spend the summer. Um, and Madison is, is really like the best of the best <laughs> during the summer. Um, not only are there all of those events that we just covered that SESI and, and Whistley organizes, but the city in general is just a really great place to spend the summer. Um, if you're into, you know, nature, um, there's a wealth of activities <laughs> that you can take part in. Um, the uh, Madison is surrounded on two sides by lakes. So if you like boating or swimming or, um, you know, going on walks by the lakes, that's, you know, that's a very popular activity. Um, there's also the terrace where they hold free concerts throughout the summer, and it's also just a really nice gathering place. Um, there are a couple of other sort of city organized events, Maxwell Street Days on State Street, and the Art Fair up on Capitol Square, as well as the Dane County Farmers Market, which happens weekly um, at the Capitol Square. Um, and as you can see from these pictures um, below, it's just a really beautiful campus and it's even more beautiful in the summer. So I think it's, you know, you really can't go wrong spending the summer here. Um, so now I'm just going to get into sort of generally how you apply to SESI. Um, it's really easy. Um, the application form which is sort of the first thing that you'll be submitting when you apply is right on our website. Um, if you go to sesi.wisc.edu slash apply um, and then click where it says to click here to apply, you'll fill out sort of a general sort of informational application about, you know, um, who you are, you know, if you're enrolled in any uh, other, you know, um, programs during the academic year, sort of why you want to apply to SESI. Um, and then from there, after you've submitted that sort of preliminary form, you will submit a personal statement or a statement of purpose, depending on, I mean, Sarah will explain why, you know, what the differences between those two uh, documents are, but they're generally functionally the same. Um, then you will also be submitting transcripts um, from your previous institutions of higher education or current institutions that you're attending. You'll also submit a copy of your CV or resume. All three of those um, items, the personal statement, the transcripts, and the CV will be um, uploaded to the box folder, the secure box folder that's linked on our website. Um, 
which we will have access to and we'll collect those files. So it's super easy for you. Again, then you'll also pay the $25 application fee. Again, that's also linked on the apply page. Um, and finally, if you are applying for financial aid, you will also submit two recommendation letters. Um, essentially, uh, you, you know, the, the your recommender will be sending that to us, so you don't necessarily need to submit them. Um, you would just need to obviously go through the process of communicating that you'd like a recommendation letter written, and then your recommender would be um, emailing their letter directly to us. So I think Sarah will take it from here. Okay, now let's talk about how much it costs to attend SESI. Um, and just as a note, this fee structure does not apply to current UW-Madison and Minnesota, uh, Wisconsin and Minnesota resident undergraduate students. If you are a Wisconsin or Minnesota undergraduate, you would follow the normal UW-Madison fee structure. If you have questions about this, please email us and we're happy to tell you more. So tuition at SESI is $5,000. However, this does not include the cost of textbooks, living expenses, health insurance, or the new student document fee. So in addition to tuition, if you have never studied at the University of Wisconsin-Madison before, there is a new student document fee of $130. Basically, UW-Madison charges this fee to any student who has never taken a course at UW-Madison before. Once paid, all SESI students or all UW-Madison students are able to order official transcripts from UW-Madison for your lifetime at no cost. Um, and then there is a $25 application processing fee. It is our goal to make SESI as affordable as possible. So if the application fee or new student document fee pose a hardship, please reach out to us and we are happy to discuss your case. And uh, even though the $5,000 tuition cost may also seem prohibitive, there is a lot of financial aid available to students of any type. And I'm really excited to tell you more about that right now. Okay, there are a wide array of funding opportunities available to SESI students. Some of the scholarship and funding opportunities listed below have additional requirements beyond what is covered here and in the following slides. We recommend that you take the SESI funding quiz on our website if you have any questions about your eligibility. Basically, it's a very short quiz. You answer a few simple questions about yourself, and it will tell you all of the scholarships and fellowships, financial aid opportunities that you are eligible for, and it's a really good resource. So it's definitely worth checking out. Okay, so the Title VIII Fellowship. This is administered by the U.S. Department of State and the Center for Russia, East Europe, and Central Asia at UW-Madison. This fellowship provides funding for research and language training for American scholars in the study of Eastern Europe and Eurasia. Since this funding does come from a federal source, you must be a U.S. citizen to receive a Title VIII Fellowship. Um, so who is eligible? U.S. citizens who are graduate students or who will be graduate students in the fall following their time at SESI, uh, post-baccalaureate scholars, and working professionals. This fellowship offers students um, full tuition at SESI, covers a new student document fee, and also includes a $2,500 living stipend that you can use however you need. Um, and then the, there are some additional requirements for fellows. The, you must maintain good academic standing during your fellowship. You are required to complete a pre and post program oral proficiency interview. All students at SESI have the opportunity to take an oral proficiency interview, both pre and post, but only Title VIII fellows are required to take uh, oral proficiency interviews at both the beginning and the end of their fellowship. You must complete occasional post fellowship surveys. And um, Title VIII fellows are very strongly encouraged to seek speaking opportunities uh, for federal agencies. So give presentations on your research uh, for federal bodies and also to seek employment with federal agencies post fellowship. Um, and Megan touched on this earlier. 
But in addition to the base materials required for the SESI applications, Title VIII applicants must submit a statement of purpose for the fellowship. So this statement of purpose supplants the SESI personal statement. So you do not need to, if you're applying for a Title VIII fellowship, you do not need to submit a SESI personal statement. You would just submit a Title VIII statement of purpose. In your statement of purpose, you will describe your commitment to continued study of the languages and societies of Central Asia, how your academic and career plans will further Title VIII's mission of developing and maintaining U.S. expertise on the Central Eurasian region. So, um, and that would be one to two pages. We have more information about this on our website. And as always, you can email us with questions. Okay, the Foreign Language and Area Studies or FLAS Fellowship. This is something that uh, the Center for Russia, East Europe, and Central Asia at UW-Madison administers, but it also is a fellowship that your home institution may administer. So please, uh, we encourage you to check with your home, inst home institution to see if they offer the FLAS Fellowship um, because you will be most competitive within your own home institution applying for this award. We definitely encourage you to apply for both, but um, both FLAS at your home institution and at UW-Madison, but it is definitely worth looking into and you can email us if you're not sure if your home institution offers the FLAS fellowship, we're happy to look into it. So this is an award provided by the U.S. Department of Education to assist students in acquiring foreign language competencies. Again, since this is offered by a federal uh, body, it is open to only U.S. citizens, permanent residents, and U.S. nationals. Undergraduate students must be studying at the intermediate level or higher of a language. Graduate students may be granted an exception for beginner level language study if they have achieved a high level of proficiency in another language, and typically that does need to be another regional language. So the FLAS Fellowship offers students full tuition at SESI and a $2,500 stipend. Unfortunately, it does not cover the new student document fee. And the additional requirements of being a FLAS fellow are to maintain good academic standing during your fellowship, to undergo pre and post program evaluation. This would be conducted by your instructor rather than um, an oral proficiency interview, though, as stated before, you still have the opportunity to take an oral proficiency interview if you are interested in doing so and you would be required to complete a post-fellowship report and occasional post-fellowship surveys. And as mentioned before, just to go over it again, students at FLAS granting institutions are encouraged to first apply at their home institution before applying for a CRECA administered FLAS. Okay, Whistley Tuition Scholarship and the SESI Tuition Remission Scholarship. So WISLI stands for Wisconsin Intensive Summer Language Institutes. SESI is one of the Wisconsin Intensive Summer Language Institutes. So any student who is applying to any WISLI program is eligible for this scholarship. The WISLI Tuition Scholarship covers 50% of tuition at one of the WISLI Summer Language Institutes, such as SESI. And anyone is eligible. So this is open not just to U.S. citizens, not just to graduate students, not just to students enrolled um, at an academic institution during the academic year. You, Anyone, as long as you're studying at a Whistley Institute, you are eligible for this scholarship. You can scan the QR code or visit the website URL uh, listed on this page for more information. Then the SESI Tuition Remission Scholarship, this varies in amount of award, but can grant students uh, tuition remission of up to $4,000. Again, awards vary based on funding availability. Um, all SESI students are eligible, similar to the Whistley Tuition Scholarship. There are no restrictions. The only requirement is that you are studying at SESI. Uh, priority is given to students who are not eligible for other awards, such as Title VIII or FLAS. And then Recipients must provide a post-fellowship narrative to that will be featured on the SESI or Whistley website and or in promotional materials. So that's just really kind of the main requirement of this scholarship.
Okay, a brief look at the 2023 timeline. Priority applications are due February 1st, 2023. That is priority applications for both Title VIII and the general SESI um, application. And priority applications determine what courses we are going to offer in summer 2023. So if you are interested in a particular course and you wanna make sure that we are able to offer that course, please apply by the priority deadline. Encourage your friends to apply by the priority deadline because that's how we determine what courses um, that will take place in summer 2023. And additional applications for open classes will be accepted on a rolling basis until April 1st. But um, again, if you have a particular class in mind that you really need to take, uh, do apply by the priority deadline. From March through April, admissions uh, decisions are sent out to applicants and they are given time to make a decision and accept their admission at SESI. April 1st, 2023 is the final application deadline. We will not accept applications after this time. And June 19th is when SESI classes begin. August 11th is when SESI classes end. All right, so now I'm just gonna cover a couple of tips for how to um, create a really competitive, good SESI application, um, and also to maybe alleviate some of the stress, hopefully associated with applying for anything. It's always kind of a stressful process. So um, sort of touching on what Sarah just talked about, um, it's best to apply early, as early as possible. Um, like Sarah said, the way that we sort of decide what languages we're able to offer each year is based on how many applications for that language we receive prior to the priority deadline. So if you are really set on learning a specific language um, and you want to, you know, make sure, you know, to the best of your ability that we're, we are planning on offering it, then you should be applying definitely before that priority deadline because this gives us enough time to you know, coordinate an instructor for that course and all of that. So that's your best chance for making sure that we offer the language that you're um, that you're interested in. Um, another tip is to start researching financial aid opportunities as soon as possible. We covered um, a bunch of really great ones in this presentation, but there are plenty of other um, opportunities that we have not covered that may be specific to your institution. Um, and that will also be, you know, something that you might be more competitive for if it's at your offer through your home institution, because, you know, you already have that sort of um, that association with that um, university. Um, so definitely start looking into funding. Um, you know, as soon as possible in order to get a full idea of what's available. Um, when you are in the process of submitting your application and sort of preparing all of those materials, um, it's a really good idea to sort of um, put a spotlight on any past language study, especially intensive language study that you've done um, previously because this is um, a really great marker to us that you sort of know how, you know, intensive language study programs work, that you're, you know, you understand the, um, the time and the effort that it takes to, to study a language intensively. And also, um, you know, maybe you've studied a related language to that region, you know, maybe you've studied um, Arabic or Turkish or, um, or Russian or Chinese or something that that also has sort of ties to that region. That's also a really good um, thing to spotlight because it shows a sort of um, overarching interest in the region that is really important to us when we're looking at um, potential students to admit to the program. Um, and finally, if you are um, applying for financial aid, which means that you will need to, to provide two letters of recommendation. Um, we recommend that you um, that you reach out to your professors that you want to or, or any recommender um, as soon as possible. A lot of times they ask that you give them two weeks time to provide a letter of rec. Um, so obviously the sooner you ask you the better. Um, 
And additionally, it's always a good idea to give them a copy of your resume that they can sort of look over and reference in their recommendation. That way they can um, sort of craft the best uh, recommendation for you. Um, just a little note, um, obviously, you know, things pop up and if it if it so happens that, you know, maybe your recommender can't get uh, your letter in prior to whatever deadline, if it's a couple days after the deadline and you have all of your other materials in, that's fine. Um, so long as it's not, you know, weeks after the deadline, you know, that's, that's completely doable. Hey, so great. That's yeah, sorry. That's the end of our presentation. Um, so thank you so much for um, for listening and we hope that it was informative. Um, as always, you can always reach out to either of us um, via email. Um, the just base SESI contact email is uh, sessi at krika.wisc.edu. So we're always checking that email. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, and if Sarah wants to make any conclusion. Yeah, sure. I would just say follow us on social media. We are on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're even on LinkedIn. So uh, there are a lot of platforms you can follow us on. Visit our website, sessi.wist.edu. And we really look forward to reading your applications and hopefully seeing you in Madison this summer. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>